Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Mike Kleba. That music. Music music teacher gotta appreciate that stuff, eh? Hey yeah, Mike, man. So, so it's been awesome to get to know you. Mike and I have been just having some great conversations and we're kind of down. I was actually listening to some we we talked one day about some rap music. <laughs> And I was, I was actually listening when I was working out, I was listening to some old school rap and I'm like, I'm gonna have Mike on the podcast. I'm not as literally when I messaged you, I'm not even kidding. That makes me so happy, man. I yeah. know it's awesome. Cause we like have like a, a affinity for eighties rap when I, I don't know if that's when you grew up or that's yes, when, you grew up. Oh, when I grew up, man. It's, so, it's Hey, up. for those of you who don't know, Mike is a wonderful educator in the New York area and he actually has a book and before we get into three questions, he has a book with Dr. Ryan O'Hara. Uh, that's called other full, how to change the world through and there's through and, and your school, how to change the world and your school through other people. So you before we get into three questions, can you kind of give like the, the 30 second to a minute synopsis of the book? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so a lot of school leadership, as we kind of frame it, it's about basically fundamentally telling other people what to do. And that's kind of what we think about in education um, on some level. I mean, we have this weird split where we also want to help people become something. But at the end of the day, we tell people what to do. And um, <laughs> and what, uh, what Ryan and I were interested in when we wrote this book is how, first of all, th that's not really practical. You can't be everywhere. Right. You, can't, you can't teach chemistry class. You can't teach third grade. You can't um, attend the uh, meeting with that uh, a beleaguered parent who's upset about their child. You can't be in the special ed meeting. You can't be everywhere. What you need to do is trust and work through other people. Right. And if you stop working on other people and start working through them, what you're going to find is that instead of feeling like your influence gets smaller, even though it might look like that right. at first, you actually get a much broader influence and you actually impact a lot more people. And that's what administrators should be doing. We should right. be changing schools from the inside. That's what we should be doing. Hey, so actually, you know, when I, I, I'm a pretty competitive person, right? And I think a lot of times competitiveness kind of seems like a, a really individual thing. It's about me crushing other people. And I, I've actually seen where um, some schools, maybe some administrators, they like don't want to share their secrets because they want to be the best, right? And that's mm. kind of the way to do it. And I love what you shared because I actually found that I, I could do really, really well and my school could do really well if I actually helped other people. And it was like kind of funny because we talk about competition is almost a bad thing. But I think, you know, especially in the notion of leadership, if you think about, you know, in a classroom, uh, those, those classrooms that we've all had at some point where it's like, well, you know, only a certain amount of people pass my class. I'm like, oh, you're probably not that great of a teacher. Mm. Then. Always some people actually understand what you're talking about, right? As opposed to, you know, I, and I found that it was like kind of a, uh, there, it wasn't as counterintuitive as people make it out to be is that, yeah, I want to be really good at my, my job and to actually do that in the role of leadership, you have to empower other people because micromanaging not only takes a, a lot of time, but it's not as effective. Right. And it's actually really kind of putting those people. So I, I, I love, I love the concept. And for anyone who's interested, check out the link and Mike and I are going to talk about the book a lot more in depth in our longer podcast. Uh, and, and I highly recommend anything that Mike's puts together because he's super positive, uh, f not positive in the like just rainbow and sunshine stuff, but positive in the way that you find solutions, which is what I really appreciate about you and, and having those connections. So, Ryan, I, I'm really curious, uh, thinking about how many people you've inspired in social media and your schools and actually uh, your school district, right? It's, is it, it's North Shore, right? You got it. It's North Shore. Right? North Shore, I've been out there. And you know what? This happened. Mike, did you know this is going to happen? A little shout out to North Shore. <laughs> I love I, it, right? I'd only hope that it would happen. And I have to tell you, man, as a you know, as we kind of make our way through this, I remember so well when you first came because, and I'm just going to put it this way, man. You can take it the way you want to. But yeah. your presentation was literally the first like broad in the auditorium whole faculty presentation yeah. that i'd ever seen that didn't suck and i'm not <laughs> saying it wasn't just that it didn't just suck it was it right. was really good right. but it didn't suck and for me i remember being like you know i did my normal thing i walked into the auditorium i you know slouched into my chair you know i got right. prepared for an hour of like you know comatosing like maybe <laughs> i'm gonna be on my phone do my thing okay. you know checking every once in a while maybe look like i'm taking notes and then you start doing your thing and I'm like, oh, hold on, wait a second. This guy, 
I this guy, that. this guy actually has something to say. Like, and and people are like engaged, and people are cracking up, and then people are crying, and I'm like, who is this guy? Like, what the, <laughs> the heck is obviously, going on? Here? Obviously from Canada. <laughs> yeah, I'm like very using, John, Can very John Candyish. Yeah, exactly. He's using I, John Candy. <laughs> exactly. He's doing Uncle Buck like magical Canadian power on all of us. What, right. What's going on here? All right, we're just gonna cut that part out for the for Instagram right there. <laughs> just a little, a little. Uh, anyway, so this is actually supposed to be about you, man. So I appreciate that though. And like you're, I will tell you this. Mm. I distinctly remember because I worked with administrators before from several districts. And uh, y'all came in and I was nervous because it was like everyone just finished an entire day of school. So it wasn't like a PD day. So I actually distinctly remember people coming in and I was like, and I was like, uh, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Chris and actually uh, you got it. Yeah. I'm like playing music. He's like, why are you playing? I'm like, cause they're dead. Like they're tired. We need to like <laughs> pump this up before we start. Right. And it's just like, kind of, so I actually distinctly remember, I, 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 weirdly enough, I remember actually sitting on the stage before I just kind of remember having the conversation. I actually, mm. it's weird because I can't even remember how many years ago it was, but it feels like kind of yesterday. Yeah. But everything feels like yesterday when it was in person, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, man. It's like a time warp. Right. It's like, what, honestly, and I know everybody says this and we talk about it like crazy, like everywhere on social media. We right. talk about it when we run right. into people at the grocery store. We were talking about it over the holidays. But honestly, man, what the heck happened to the last two and a half years? Like, blur. it's all a blur. Right. All you know, blur. the only proof is that kids are older. If kids weren't taller and like able to do more things, we'd be like, that didn't happen. Well, actually, I'm, I, I don't, I actually saw a politician getting slammed because they didn't say the right year. I'm like, who knows the year? <laughs> I'm like, come on, that, that one's not good. Like, come Seriously. on, who knows the year? It's just a blur. It's all the same, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's get into it. So I know you're a very uh, inspiring person. Uh, and I know you've inspired a lot of people through your work, through what you do in education. So when you look back at your teaching career, whether it's a student, colleague, who is a teacher you think of that inspired you and why? Um. What a great question, man. And I, I love uh, asking people to dig into uh, a great teacher they had because teachers never die inside mm -hmm. the students who love them. You know what I mean? We, they carry them forever. It's one of the best things about being a teacher, but also being in the chain of teachers. So um, I think about Ms. Vidoski. She was my second grade teacher. Dude, I swear to God, I don't remember her first name. I never learned it. I went to a small yes. cafe. It's Miss. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, Miss Vidoski. In fact, it was Miss <laughs> Vidoski. I didn't even right. know the concept of Ms. I'm in second grade. Right. I'm in a small town in so southeastern Pennsylvania. It's a small uh, Catholic school. It's one of those schools where like each room is the grade. So there's like the first grade classroom, the second grade classroom, and each class has got like 26 kids in it. It's called St. Eleanor's. It's now an Italian restaurant, like, you know, but, but it was, it was it's built. In, yeah, exactly. And it was built in like 19, like 19 or something like that. And I swear, dude, it was exactly like, I went to school in a movie set. I didn't know it. I didn't appreciate it as, as a kid. Yeah. Anyway, Ms. Vidoski was one of the few um, teachers in the school who didn't used to be a nun or a priest mm -hmm. uh, or wasn't a nun. And she, dude, she was amazing. I was terrified of school as a little kid. I still kind of remember that fear, you know, and I have a lot of admiration for anybody who brings any sort of courage. As we know, courage is not about being fearless, but rather like moving, even though you're afraid. And I, mm -hmm. man, I was a second grader. I was terrified. I just moved here from a uh, skip back school which was an even smaller like rural school like in the right. sticks and and i was terrified there were like crucifixes on the wall and nuns and habits and stuff and i was like freaking out i was like very terrified. exorcist no dude seriously i'm not <laughs> kidding right. and i wasn't really catholic my parents aren't right. catholic so it was all new to me i would go into class and just start crying and ms Vidoski, she didn't like uh, she didn't coddle me she didn't go like oh it's gonna be okay right she would say things like you know why you're crying? Because you care. And like she's saying that to a second grader. <laughs> That's amazing. You know what I mean? Like she's saying That's that to a second yeah. grader. And, uh, you know, I got uh, so many like good vibes about her. I don't have a ton of clear memories, but I have one I mm -hmm. just want to share real quick. She took me to a Philadelphia Phillies game and my parents let her. Now we lived about an hour outside of Philadelphia. She literally came in her old beater picked me up like i sat in the front seat it was like a bench seat we rode into philly we went to see the phillies we were sitting in the nosebleeds and this is back in the 80s when tickets were i mean nosebleed seats were probably like six bucks we sit right. up there 
And I still remember her going like, come on, Petey. Like she's yelling for Pete Rose. She's so jazzed for like everybody batting. And like, she's just like this little woman, man. And I'm a little kid and I'm looking at her. I'm like, she's magic. This woman that's is magic. Awesome. And I, and I just believed everybody at veteran stadium. That's no longer here, but uh, everyone at veteran stadium, like knew her. She was like a hero. She was a celebrity to me. That's I crazy. fell asleep on the ride home. She said, why don't you jump in the back and just fall asleep? I fell asleep in the bench seat in the back. She delivered me to my parents. Like, that couldn't even happen now. That's probably illegal. Right. Taking a seven-year-old to the Phillies right. game is probably illegal. Anyway, so right. uh, Ms. Vodowski is probably number one at the top. Number two, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Peter Donahue, Father Peter, who was um, a teacher that I had at Villanova University. You know, I I was fortunate enough to go to Villanova for theater. Um, I somehow got a full ride there, dude. I still have no idea how that happened. I got to work in the marketing part department with an amazing person named Sue Wingy awesome. and, fa and father Peter Donahue. He dude, this guy was my first teacher at this place and he was scary and funny. He said the F word. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that he's now the president <laughs> of Villanova. So, but uh, like, really? like, and I, and I, rem and I remember, oh, oh. dude, and uh, now, you know what? Everybody knows Father Peter knows Father right. Peter. Well, like, yeah, I'm sure you heard a lot of F words at the Phillies yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And I, know, and I know Philadelphia bad, so. Uh, we're, we're beautiful people, George. Right, come at, right, come, right. come at me. We'll, we'll throw snowballs at your Santa Claus. <laughs> throw snowballs um, at Santa Claus. Right, that's right. Uh, anyway, anyway, but, uh, but I remember Father Peter, he, he basically invited us in this first class. It was called dramaturgy, right? Or dramaturgy. Um, he, he, he invited all of us to look at theater as something serious. Like it wasn't a study of like something entertaining or something that was cool or something that like gave us identity. He's like, no, theater is ancient. Theater has been here since humans began. Theater helps us know who we are. And he said, theater is where we see ourselves and see each other. That's actually what theater means. And I, man, I remember just knocking me over. He was also really okay. funny. He was a great director, great actor. So that's my, uh, that's my story on those guys. All right, we're going to shout out to them. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you went to yeah. Villanova, right? Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry, right? Kyle yeah, Rock, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Played Villanova. They have a pretty stellar basketball team. Yeah, uh, man. Are you kidding me? National champs, dude. I mean, right? not recently, yeah. but a few years ago. Yeah. Right. And probably like one of the best endings to a national championship game ever too. Right. Preach, it's, man. It's, right? it's religion. It's religion in Philly. You know, like even if you're not a Nova fan, you respect Nova. I mean, we have That's Temple, right. we have St. John's, we get Drexel. We got, you know, we got so many awesome. great schools, UPenn, but, uh, but Villanova is dope. I try not to turn. I always like, always on the tip of turning this into a basketball podcast but i always try to get out of it <laughs> but hey you know, do you know you know what's actually funny is that when you talked about um you know my speaking and presentation right and it's yeah. funny because i think the reason you and i have connected so well is because my grade three teacher cindy penrose really influenced me and i remember she was my music teacher grade three and very she was stern like you didn't mess around with her right and uh but she just brought out the best and she wrote my grade eight report card like you will be on a stage somewhere sometime and uh, i just, and you know, like and the reason i bring that up is because what you said is so true is that like your the legacy of great teachers lives on and forever it's just absolutely incredible right and just thinking about those stories that you shared and so now getting into the second question and this is beautiful because it ties so beautifully to your book and what you talk about um, other full, which is linked down below. You just want to check it out. And obviously, like after listening, Mike, who would want to read this book, right? And not you, Dr. Ryan O'Hara, too. Got to give Dr. Ryan O'Hara. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want him to feel left out, right? But, Yo, you guys will love this book, too. It's so readable. Yeah. Oh, and that, like, obviously. And if you, if, if you, if it reads like you talk, I'm all in, right? And so if you think about the administrators, the leaders in your career, um, your experience as a school, who's like an administrator that sticks out to you and why? Well, I, I'm going to paint a picture for you about a guy named John Worthington, who was the principal at Abington Junior High School when I when I got hired uh, there at the uh, very end of the 90s. I just lost my first teaching job. I, I mm -hmm. got let go from my first teaching job. I remember the principal saying like, you know what, Mike, I don't think you got the stuff, you know? And I remember yeah. just feeling like, oh man. And, and here's the thing, George, and you, you know what this is like. I, I was kind of a rebellious uh, mm -hmm. teacher who was making sense of what was happening. I, I was teaching the kids in the room. I've always been rigorous. I've always been proud of that. Students have always told me you pushed me, but I also had a good time. I, I still feel that pride, but my first year I got let go. And John Worthington is one of the people who hired me at Abington. And this guy, 
man, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say about it. He had the capacity to make you feel like when you talked to him, you were the only person who existed. And he also at the same time could like punch out bad guys. Like he was like in a comic book. He like, he could put a, 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 a parent in their place and could right. also stand on behalf of a parent who was telling truth. He was right. that kind of guy. And I, and I have a really awesome memory of him. I remember I got to school early. It was like my second year that, at, at Abington. And I got to my classroom and George, there was a bird flying around in my classroom. I don't know how it got there, but there was a starling. I don't know. It was a starling. I, I, man, I'm still kind of bird blind. You know what I mean? Like I can pick out like a, like a bald right, eagle. Right. Let me get my bird watcher book out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, can you describe it to me? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and, and I'm in my room and I'm like, there's a freaking bird. So I go to the main office. Of course, John is there. John probably got there at like 4 30 AM. You know how great principals are. <laughs> And, uh, and <laughs> like filling out paperwork and sending emails yeah. and responding to people, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I'm like, Hey, uh, uh, excuse me, John, uh, there's a, there's a bird in my classroom. And I swear he didn't bat an eye. He just got up and he goes, okay. So we walk to my classroom, man. And I'm not kidding. He walks <laughs> into the room and he goes, Oh, would you look at that? It's a starling. And I'm like, well, okay. And suddenly I'm like, first of all, starling is a cool name for a bird. Second of all, he just <laughs> named that bird without right. him blinking. Right. And then I'm not kidding oh, you. No. He slowly approached the bird <laughs> and then he slowly captured the bird in his hands. Really? And then he walked very gingerly towards the door. I opened the door for me, walked out in the hallway, and then he walked out the main hallway into the front and then he let it go like it was the opening of the oh, freaking okay. Olympics, man. It's like it's like a dude, movie. it's bananas. So John Worthington and anybody who listens to this podcast who knew John, uh, they're going to be like, yeah, that's John Worthington. He's super, superstar, super amazing. John Worthington. Hey, I, got, I got to teach you. I got to teach you a little admin trick. This is this is what John probably did, right? Oh, so oh, late so on. like, you know, I'm getting older and have to go to the bathroom a couple of times. In the night, <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, and sir. You know, you know what I, I and I have trouble getting back to sleep after I have to get up. And I would always like answer a teacher's email mm -hmm. at like two thirty in the morning, right? Sure. Like right. I'm up for like two minutes, but I would just answer somebody. Might as well. I'm and here. then they'd say like, "Oh, what are you doing answering emails?" I was like, oh, "I was just working." <laughs> Even though done. I was like up for like all of thirty seconds, no, I was just working at night, just you know, putting some stuff together, doing the job, that's being a sure. superhero. That's, that's what really great principals do. They pretend they're working all night, but it's really just bathroom stuff. <laughs> right uh, that's great yeah like just like you think i'm batman but i'm actually just going to the bathroom yeah i just have to have a bad bladder <laughs> so uh, that, that's true story anyway this is i'm actually really fascinated with what you're gonna say with this question because this is like i don't know what happened that first year but i always ask people mm -hmm. go back to your first year teach yourself what advice would you give and like i don't know what happened that first year but if you could go back and talk to yourself then what, what would you say i would say fall in love with this profession find every chance you can to fall in love with this profession because this is i call it the world's second oldest profession or the other oldest profession <laughs> it's <laughs> it we, we like, are, oh wait a minute yep there you go there well, you go there it is <laughs> yeah and, right. some, and, and sometimes it feels like that profession but the point is um <laughs> fall in love with this profession because honestly to do this work is the coolest work yeah. there is and everybody who knows it, i know you know it man i've seen you talk i've read your stuff like you are so mm -hmm. deep in this so i don't need to tell you this but to anybody out there who's listening you know if you're not in love with this profession then either you need to dip get out or right. you need to remind yourself why we're in the best profession in the world this is the profession of magic we work in like the tectonic plates of the humanity and right. uh and that's what I would say, because I had some tough times my first year, man. I, I, when I got let go that first year, I got to do the whole year. I was so depressed and I felt mm. like such a jerk. I felt like such a loser. I felt like I didn't measure up. And, and I had all these students and parents who said really nice things. I'm not kidding you, man. This is real. And I still have it. The teachers in the school, all of them but four. So it was like 60 some odd teachers signed a petition saying I should stay at the school. Oh, the, wow. I, I dig this bad boy out when I'm having a bad time. I've done it like three times since then. And I'm not kidding you. It's like a it's like a salve on my soul. But this is what I would say to myself. Mike, fall in love with teaching right. and 
look for people who are in love with the gig, not in love with the, you know, all of the adulation, not in love right. with being able to be told, oh, you're a great teacher. Cause we know those guys, right? We know people who like get off on being heroic. Yeah. I'm saying find the ones who actually love this gig and then like talk to them, listen to them, get into their classroom, see what they're doing. And sometimes they look like, you know, really tough. They look like, you know, hard edges. Yeah. Sometimes they look like really friendly, funny people, whatever, get around, be omnivorous, hang out with the people who like to ball because this is a game for ballers. That's what teaching is. It's like the opposite of the bad staff room, right? Like if you, if you go in the staff room where people talk negatively, that's what you're going to end up doing. Right. And if you, and social spaces too, that happens there. And, mm. and I, and I, I'm a big, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer and you know, this is why I wanted to talk to you. Right. Cause I know you, you, you're a super fun guy and, uh, the, you know, I know you take the job seriously, but we don't, we, neither of us take ourselves too seriously, which mm. is kind of fun. This is uh, I was, this is what came up to my mind when I was thinking about this. So like last night I'm out getting a couple of things and, uh, I pick up a s sandwiches for the family. Right. Right. And my daughter loves pizza. Right. But like, it, I didn't get her pizza. I got her a pizza at a sandwich place, right? Which is mm. literally bread. No, what are you tomato doing? Tomato sauce. What are you doing? Cheese and pepperoni, right? <laughs> like it's a, it's just like bread. It's just like a, right? Yeah, sure. I was God bringing that. <laughs> there you like, go. Oh my God, Dad, this is the best. Like, oh my God, because it was like not expected, right? That's it right. was not expected to do that. I love it. And and I said, you know, if I could, and I actually, wrote, I just wrote about this. I put it out and this, people might have read this already. Because um, like when we're recording this, I said, if I could have any superpower, it'd be to see the world through my kids' eyes. Because that that's that's really, and that's why I love education. And I think that's one of the things that's always a blessing is that even through turmoil, through all the negative stuff, when kids see things in a way that just inspires me and, you know, I know it's like, oh, like kids taught me. No, I, I've taught kids more stuff because I'm, you know, I'm older and smarter. <laughs> but it's enthusiasm, right? Yeah, it's man. enthusiasm for things and the things that you often take for granted. And that's that's what I love about it. And so I, everyone, if you're listening, uh, and uh, I, I highly recommend connect with Mike. You can see his Twitter handle there. Check out the book, uh, Otherful with Mike Kleba and Dr. Ryan O'Hara. Great guy. Right? Great guy. One of my best friends. Right. So check it out. Mike, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I look forward to talking to you more. Thanks everyone for listening. There you go. Got theme song, man. Where'd you get that theme song? I don't know. It's like theme, song. theme songs are us. You're like, you're like, you're like, you're like theme it's song. Not, from Ben Sound, it actually says in the description. It's cool. I dig it. It's up. It's a vibe. Yeah.